talk about uh, tonight, uh, seeing Nick Smith being in the first round and Marty Bailey. What stood out about both those guys specifically, and why do you feel like they were going to be good additions to this team? Well, Nick Smith, you know, we had um, much higher in the draft. And, um, you know, he's young, right? And, you know, he's got great size. You know, he's a shooter in our league that's at a premium. You know, athletic. You know, last week I spoke to his coach, Eric Musselman, who I had in Los Angeles and we're friends. And, you know, we spoke about all his players in Arkansas. And uh, Nick was one of them. He spoke very highly of him. So, um, you know, to us, I mean, of course, you always got to wait for three or four years to look back, and and then you really find out, you know, how good your draft was, right? But we feel very fortunate to get Nick uh, where we did. And um, Amari, you know, it's the same thing. Um, he, you know, at 41, you know, we had a much higher. Another young, you know, ball handling guard, you know, played at a big time program and uh, had a very good Chicago pre-draft. But, you know, another young player that, you know, maybe, well, first of all, we'll bring him to summer league, right? And he'll he'll get time there and uh, he'll come to training camp and, you know, probably end up falling into our developmental program. But you don't know. We'll, we'll learn more during summer league. So um, we're, we're pleased. We're pleased to have the draft that we did. Who's that? Nick Nick Smith. Nick Smith sorry. Um, yeah, you know, you look at the mock drafts. I, I would guess he's probably top fifteen, but you know, I don't look at those dra those things too much. You know. Way back. Oh uh, well, we had him in we had him in the top. I don't have it with me, but I think we had you know, he had, I think we had him in the top sixteen. You know, he had a, he he missed some time this year with an injury, but uh, we looked into it and you know, we feel comfortable. And he he came back and played. So. I know you can't talk about the trade, but just as the draft as a whole tonight with everybody you picked. How would you assess um, how you kind of get the players? I guess that you want. Like, like I said, you know, we're, we're very pleased, okay? But, you know, you have to remember that, you know, you get to look back on it in four years and then you find out how you really did, right? So um, I can't remember a draft that I left that I wasn't very happy, right? And they're all not great drafts when you look back on it in four years. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're pleased to have the draft we did. We think we've, you know, um, you know, for our plan, right, which is to, you know, build the team, you know, through the G League drafting, you know, maybe making a savvy trade. You know, if there's a free agent that makes sense, of course, we'll do that. But we looked to build through through the draft and, and we added four players into the system. You know, they might not all be on, you know, our roster next year, the Hornet roster. But, you know, with the new rules, with having a third two way, you know, it's getting closer and closer to what baseball does with the minor league system. You know, so it's really important that you, especially for a team, a market like ours, is to, you know, build through the draft and get players and talent in the system. And then how do these moves that you made tonight, do you think set you up for the rest of the offseason going forward and not just the next one moves with your free agency? Well, we got a lot of work. I think you know that. You know, the next, you know, threshold is July 1st. You know the free agent. Uh, we've got a couple of restricted free agents, so um, you know that that's the next thing. So uh, to get through the draft, you know we're pleased. We got a couple of days now to, you know, get the kids in, have a press conference, you know, have a little fun with them, and then we'll start to continue to focus, you know, on July 1st, right? Which is, you know, our free agents, and then any other needs we may have. When you think about, you use the word young a lot terms of the evening and, and is that create a wider berth in terms of whether or not they have success or not in terms of them being younger and almost kind of makes it more of a, a shot in the dark but more of a wider berth in terms of what the outcomes can be for each player 
Yeah, well, it's tougher. You know, for a general manager, it's it's much better, you know, to draft a four-year kid, right, who's 22 years old and you've got four years, you know, to look at the kid and, you know, and plus when you're 22, 23, you, you know, you're, you've brought, you're grown up, you're a lot more mature and professional, right? So we end up, you know, the way it's gone the last 20 years, you end up drafting, you know, young kids, young, young adults, young men at 19, maybe 20 years old, you know, especially in the lottery and, and often in most of the first round. Um, and it takes time. So you have to make a decision early on, you know, as to potential. And then, you know, sometimes it'll take, you know, three or four years to develop a player. Um, but, you know, that's why I think it's important to get players into the system. And our scouts in Greensboro, our coaches in Greensboro, if you look at their record with, you know, Devontae, the Martin brothers, Jalen McDaniels, Nick Richards, Mark, well, you know what I mean? They, they've done a good job, you know, drafting, you know, young talent and, you know, developing them in the G League. Now, that's not to say all the players that we draft will be in the G League, but even last year, Mark Williams was in the G League, okay? And then he came out of the G League and finished the season really, really strong. And we look at him as one of our most valuable pieces right now. So, um, yeah, you know, you end up drafting young men, okay? And you do have to wait, you know, for them to develop. And, and you're hopeful that, you know, whatever you saw, you know, continues to grow and they turn into, a, you know, a good player that can help you down the road. Mitch, in terms of Brandon Miller, the, the number two pick, you've had a great track record drafting top three, top ten, compared to some of the other guys that you've selected in the past that have gone in that area. Where does the talent level for Miller compare to these other guys that eventually became all stars? Well, by taking them two, I think that speaks the world of what I think of them. Okay, and and I know that you know there's there were other choices, right? Um, but this kid is a, a dynamic wing, right? He's got great size. He's got great athletic ability. In our league, shooting the ball is a premium. Um, you'll see him rebound the ball. You'll see him bring it up the court. You, you'll see him make right-handed, left-handed passes. You know, you'll see him attack the rim. Um, like I said, one of the better shooters in the draft already, you know, as an outgoing freshman. Uh, in our league, you know, to get a player like that, you know, we think he has a chance to be a heck of a player. Um, and it, it wasn't the easiest of the decisions, you know, to go down that road. We put a lot of thought into it. There was a lot of spirited debate. Um, I've always liked the kid, right? But um, like I said earlier, you've got to do your due diligence. And the other kid I like too. You know, I've, I've seen him play multiple times in person, and we brought them both in twice, right? So it wasn't the easiest decisions. But, you know, to get a dynamic wing like that um, in this league, you know, we think we're fortunate.